YouTube, it's Brian Phillips. We're gonna open this box today. You may hear some strange noises in the background. We're gonna let you guess what's happening. You may have seen it in another video, and if you haven't yet, then just wait longer, and eventually you will. And we'll show you what's going on. We won't keep you, what is that? It's an F4U Corsair, 1100 millimeters, are you kidding? V2, what? It's so weird. By arrows. I know some of you guys are probably a little bit confused right now, and that's okay. Because we aren't confused. We are happy to bring you this amazing product. Eros has been putting this stuff out like crazy. AR630, because this is a plug and fly, and we are gonna put the AR630 in there and we're gonna use the NX8 to set it up. It's gonna be amazing. Without further ado, we're cutting in. And uh, for those of you who have guessed what the noise is in the background, timestamp your guess, no cheating. Seriously, no cheating. If you cheat, we'll know. Actually, we won't know. Go ahead and cheat if you want. Okay, so this is an F4U Corsair. It's an 1100 millimeter Warbird. Beautiful, I might add. Everybody loves the F4U Corsair has beautiful retracts. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this up and you guys may be thinking to yourself, isn't there some other item that's recently been released that's similar? Well, I don't know. I guess that depends on whether or not you watch our channel a lot and then you would know. Leave your guesses in the comments below. All right, so we've got a bag of goodies. Looks very simple. I always love it when the nut and bolt sack is small and concise. Camera crew especially loves it. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, simple, open that right up. Love the paint, love the finish, love the stars and bars, love the decals are already applied. Interestingly enough, flaps are a little bit simple on the Eros product, it's just here. It's not all the way across like we've noticed on other brands. If that becomes a problem for you, just an FYI, you should be able to cut this, put a tape hinge, You'll have to cut and it'll be three pieces. To get that to actuate is a little bit harder than it looks, just so you know. But there's nothing stopping you from adding another servo over here. And then that servo can actuate this one, okay? So we'll see how it flies. If it flies good with the flaps as is, we won't mess with it. If it flies bad with the flaps the way they are, then we'll mess with it. I can't believe that didn't take the paint off. These little foamy pieces, I'm just gonna take off. 1100 millimeters is a lot smaller than another size class that's out there like say 1200 or 1500 or 1700 millimeters. In, in fact, an 1100 millimeter is probably about half the size of a 1700 millimeter. We have done a 1700 from FMS, huge, gigantic. So without further ado, we'll just keep working through. Of course, we've got the horizontal stabilizer and elevator, pinch hinge design. Everything feels really solid for this size class. Doesn't seem like there's any problems there. Nice freedom of motion. There are control horns on each side, which is probably good given the fact that it's always better than having a reach around. Okay, we got drop tanks here. Pretty standard for an F4U4 Corsair. Hard to get the second one out. We're gonna go for the prop next. Prop is a four bladed beauty with uh, 10.58, really? That's surprising. Okay, so 10.5. 10.5, eight for the pitch. So that's pretty cool. Love that it's got painted tips. Not really a big surprise these days. Some of these things that we get on planes, we have come to expect, but we are really spoiled. Especially Brian, and Brian Phillips RC. He's really spoiled. Oh yeah. Look at that gorgeous finish. The only thing I don't like about this is that's white unfinished. Even though it looks nice, this is plastic and so I don't think that's going to hold up well but otherwise the paint finish is gorgeous just really nice and look at that that is actually functional I think maybe is it no it's glued but it's on a hinge that is so cool and then obviously a steerable tail wheel super detailed I might add and gorgeous mm -hmm. love scale details like that pilot looks good Nothing too fancy there, and instrument cluster looks good. 
really exciting. Lots of detail on this. See this? Little step up, that's sort of strange. Wonder why they chose to do that. Big elevator servo. Looks like nine gram plastic gear servo. And then nine gram plastic as well. Ooh, battery loading, nice. Look at this, wow. look at this. Okay, XT60 connector, that'll work for IC3s as well if you guys are using smart tech. Okay, so this slides in just like in the P51, that's sweet. And what we'll do is we'll slide that back in for now. Love an easy battery loading, super nice, should be easy to build this. Look at the piece count, guys. We're all in except for the other drop tank that is way deep in the foam. So I just gotta flip it over. Oh, yeah. So guys, that's it. That is a nice unbox. I love when things go that smooth and that quick. And here on Brian Phillips RC, things usually go neither. And if they do go smooth, we'll make it take forever anyway, just because that's my style. So that being said, guys, if you wanna help support our channel, the best thing you can do is buy the stuff in the links. Forgot this, folded manual. I don't like folded manuals. That's the first thing I really don't like on this plane. Pretty good thing to not like mm -hmm. if, if you're up against other choices. So everything feels nice and light. It feels like what you'd expect for the size class. We actually haven't done a lot of 1100 millimeter warbirds. We have done a few, but it's kind of a nuance for us. We haven't done many of them because I think arrows kind of commanded the market. And at the time we weren't working with arrows for anything. So we're super excited to bring this to you. I think we're just gonna jump right into the build. Oh, this has LEDs too. It does? This has LEDs. Oh, it does. What? That is awesome. I didn't know it had LEDs. That's What's crazy. this? Why is that white? I don't know. This is a really detailed plane. Oh, it's got forward facing white, oh, forward wow. facing white. I hope they're white now that I say that. And then we've got, look at that. There's a mixing board in there. So it looks like we've only got flaps, singular, aileron, and gear. Very good. So everything goes through this little mixing board. Okay, see, got that pulled out. So it's just probably like a modified Y cable sort of thing here going on. Okay, so let's go ahead and just uh, build the plane as we see fit. I'm gonna try not to look at the instructions for this, even though it's so dang simple. I could just easily look at the instructions like a smart person. I'm gonna be very difficult and hard headed like usual. So I'm gonna slide that together, four screws. Just lay this upside down. I'm gonna try to do it without the plane stand just in case you guys are doing it without a plane stand. It's always nice to be able to share that you don't need a special tool, but sometimes you need a special tool. And we're gonna to get to that really quick, sooner than later in fact, because you're gonna immediately need a stool, tool to screw in these screws. Got some antennas in there too. That's for the spinner, simulated motor. That is so cool. Guys, this is a super detailed model for 1100 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Like I said, we haven't done a lot of 1100 millimeters. Those glue in, it looks like, might be pressure fit. Okay, so it looks like probably a 1.5 or two millimeter drive size on that. That was a big screw, like long. It is long, but that's a thick wing. Yeah. F4U Corsair has a lot of lift on a lot. It's a huge wing. And that polyhedral sh shape is Something really cool. Okay, so two millimeters. Let's see if this goes. Already in. So somebody made a comment the other day on, on a plane and it was, it just made me laugh like crazy because they built this plane and I can't remember if it's the extra 300, but remember how we had problems to get the wings in on that? Oh. We also had problems on the competitive brand for what it's worth. Mm -hmm. So anyway, somebody left this long, super detailed message that told me about their woes of putting wings on and they oh. smell like all night on it. <laughs> but he didn't crash it at the airfield the next day, which is funny. So anyway, uh, that was good. And that's what you can be to all your RC friends and geeks if you decide to follow Brian Phillips RC, because that's what you're gonna be. You're gonna be the guy that knows how to put all this stuff together and people are gonna be asking you all sorts of questions. And uh, of course you'll be the life of the party. <laughs> if you're partying with we RC. go to different parties. <laughs> I, know, I was just gonna say, uh, we need to get out once in a while. Okay, so we have two screws in so far. That's a very good track record because look, we're down to 
three screws. Yep. Man, if this was only a Dynam, we would have 400 screws left pretty and sure. three tubes of glue. I'm pretty sure I would have quit by now. Yes, if we were still <laughs> I think you would have. You know, truthfully, we might have to glue that wing in, so I shouldn't speak too soon. It looks like you might have to. Thing that's cool about mm -hmm. this wing, no spar. Put your guesses in the comments <laughs> below. I may have spilled the beans in another video. Well, but I don't. I don't know if they've seen that video I know, yet. I don't know. See, that's the thing, and some of you guys have already figured this out, but when we do video production, it's usually based on when things show up and when Mother Nature cooperates, not necessarily when stuff is in stock. Sometimes it does have to do with it, but it's almost never. Uh, sometimes it's got to do with when things are released, if we're doing an early release, which is one of the coolest parts about doing this is being able to see the planes before they're actually released. Um, but sometimes we'll get them just right after they've been released and then we can just kind of do them whenever. So in this case, this plane's been out for some time, but we want you guys to not overlook it. It's a very good plane and I am super excited to be part of bringing this to you. Okay, so we have one additional screw. I don't know if that's an additional screw or if that's gonna be used to get this tail section in here because it looks like that tail section is gonna have to get glued if we you ask me. We usually have an extra arrows screw. On arrows? Yeah. Okay, so let's lay this down. Okay, normally we would build the horizontal stabilizer first. So let's go ahead and see this? The mixing board, all that stuff will fit down in that cavity. Really well thought out. Mm -hmm. This is nice, really nice. Cause then all your servos and your wiring and everything is gonna all be tucked down, ample length on the throttle lead. I mean, we haven't had a lot of problems with wiring except for maybe like on the Cessna 182 from FMS. I think it was terrible for getting all the wires through. Remember it had the glass canopy, or not the canopy, but the cockpit area. And it was oh, just I mean, like, it was terrible to get those wires through though. Cause anything. we had like a little teeny box, looked like a cool air return on an HVAC system. And you had to put all your wires from mm. the top all the way down to the bottom. Well, I mean like all the dynams were like that too. <sighs> or worse. Yeah. They didn't even we're, have the HVAC air return. Today we're going to we're going to use the NX8 today. The NX8 like we've been using. We love Spectrum stuff. We're kind of Horizon Hobby fanboys. You guys have already figured that out. Of course, this is a Hobby Zone uh, offering, so we want you to go to hobbyzone.com, check it out. We have links in the video description below. The way you can help support our channels, buy the things from the links. Looks like those go together side to side by side, but I do not think I think we're going to have to glue them. Let's check it out. Okay. All right, instruction manual. We were trying and we failed. We have to actually break the manual open. I feel like I've been cheated. Put your guesses in the video description below, in the comments section. Okay, four screws. Ah, they're recommending medium CA for the antenna, antennas. And that. And that. We're gonna use foam to foam. Okay. Okay, foam to foam, couple thoughts. Yes, you can use foam to foam. Yes, you can use CA. Why do I prefer foam to foam, camera crew? It's faster. Nope. Stronger. Nope. Easier. Nope. It smells worse. None of those things. No, it's, the reason we use foam to foam is because I'm too lazy to go get CA. Oh, well, that was the obvious answer, sorry. <laughs> now foam to foam, um, all joking aside, is probably gonna be a little bit stronger and it's gonna be a little bit more flexible, okay? Not married to this particular brand. It just happens to be the particular brand we use right now. We, we used to use a Hobby King product and um, I got sick of getting tubes that were dried out when I opened them. Not something I'm big on. This is more expensive by a factor of two to three times, unless it happens to be on sale and Horizon screws up and it's under their price for some reason, their uh, cost basis. <laughs> Hilarious. But we've never had a tube of that that we never. haven't been able to use the whole tube. No, we've had tubes from, uh, of mucilage, which is my other preferred offering uh, that we get and it, it's like froze up. You can't get out yeah. of the tube. You have to heat it up to get it out. This stuff comes in an aluminized tube, which means when you pull the cap off, it starts gooping everywhere. Put your guess in the comments below. It's getting worse. Okay. All right, so there you go. So you didn't know you were gonna get invited to a construction site mm. here on Brian Phillips RC, but you get more than you bargained for at Brian Phillips RC. Every time you come here, there's something new and exciting. And by the way, speaking of new and exciting, BrianPhillipsRC.com is the uh, labor of love for my 
wonderful, beautiful wife and camera crew, Megan. Megan has been working her tail off to try to make that into something amazing for all of you guys at home. And we appreciate you giving it, giving it a shot. Just check it out, even if it's for a few minutes. We're gonna be linking to that, obviously, in the videos. If you wanna help support us in other ways, we have Patreon and PayPal. The best way to do it, though, is just watch the videos, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications, and then choose to buy the planes when you like them. We never ask you guys to buy stuff you don't like. If you're not into F4Us, we get it. You know, not everybody's, it's not everybody's bag of tricks. Same thing with all the offerings we do here on Brian Phillips RC. You may notice I'm spreading glue on both surfaces. It takes a little bit of time. Foam to foam is a contact adhesive. It doesn't fill gaps great. Uh, it is thick, but it's not really designed to fill gaps. You see, I put quite a bit on there. The only reason, it's weird noise. The only reason I'm putting so much on right now is because I have to kind of work quick when you've got a tight purchase point like this, meaning that you're gonna be sliding them in and they're gonna to be touching each other. And uh, you're gonna get, you can have to insert this into another cavity. That's why I started with the glue inside of there. This is going to peel some of the glue off and you have to be still a little bit wet for it to work. Otherwise it's gonna stick and you're never gonna get full insertion. So. Words of wisdom. Oh, you're, you're <laughs> saying no, don't, okay. Make sure it's wet when you stick it in. Yeah. Yeah. It will, it'll provide all sorts, of, all sorts of remedy for trouble. I can tell you that. Um, all right, so here we go. So just uh, remember, that's why I'm doing this last. I did the, this part first, and then I'm doing this last so that this is nice and wet. And when I say wet, it takes about probably two to three minutes of cure time to cook off. And then this stuff will stick together. Like if you wait the right amount of time, see how they're stuck, look. That's, that's how strong the bond is after just a few seconds, okay? So that's why you gotta do it kind of quick, okay? So this is gonna wanna not slide in, so I'm gonna just get to it, okay? So I wanna try to do this to where I don't screw up the finish at all. So I'm just kind of slipping it in. Now, you can always reapply a little bit more if it's too sticky, like right now it's too sticky. I'm serious, by the way. Um, not just being a smart guy, like usual. <laughs> Trying to keep things PG here for you. Audience watching with your children's. But yeah, so I'm gonna take that, put a little bit of fresh glue on it. I'm gonna literally take the two surfaces and I'm gonna literally spread that onto the spots that were sticking and not wanting to slide in. And I'm gonna literally quickly do this because I'm gonna literally not be able to get it in the hole if I'm not careful. That glue is setting up so good. Oh boy. Almost feel like I stuck it in the wrong spot here because it's so tight. I'm serious. Look at that camera crew. I know, I'm watching. Good lordy lord lord. I'm trying to brace this on the backside and Oh yeah, we have penetration. Wow, I needed a lot less wow. glue. That was like one of the hardest inserts I've done in a long time. Yeah. So. So, less glue. Less glue, and then you gotta actually work it quick, okay? So I'm just spreading this around the edges where it's gonna be hard to slide in, okay? That's gonna hold nicely though. Okay, so I'm just rolling the tip in, okay? And you see the dihedral, oh, it's so gorgeous on the tail, on the tail feathers. Oh, that's so beautiful. Okay, in it to win it. Get that right side in a little bit more. I think, you, I think you're right. Okay, that's probably where it's gonna go though. Yeah. Okay, everybody, I want you to take a second and just hear what I was saying. I'm gonna reiterate this. This is a contact adhesive, foam to foam. Same with mucilage. Same with some other foam to foam style brands, okay? When you use it, you put it on one surface, you let it tack up, like dry. You put it on the other surface, you let it tack up, and then when you put them together, they will not move. It's like licking an envelope. You stick the envelope together and try to move it. That's the way this stuff works. The only difference is you're getting a huge surface area, okay? So don't try to fill gaps with it. If you use CA, it's a little bit easier, but the thing is it's gonna be a lot more brittle even a medium gap filling CA that's foam safe, you're gonna have the easiest time by far. 
But look how gorgeous that is. Oh yeah. Even the little dihedral on there is just amazing. I don't feel like it's even though, so I wanna take a look at this. Yep, and I'm gonna tell you why it's not even. Because this wing isn't stuck all the way in. Oh no. Get in there. Get in there. Come around here so they can see what I'm doing, camera crew. Glue weights on nobody, just like concrete. We poured some concrete here the other day. Oh, actually we didn't pour the concrete if you work for our county. That was just a figment of your imagination. It's <laughs> always been there. You see what's going on there? Mm -hmm. It's wanting to pull out. Okay, this is how you can resolve that if you have this problem. Now I'm not saying you're gonna have this problem. Some people have this problem and you might be one of them, okay? One of the people that have this problem. So if you have one that does this where it's wanting to pop out on you, this is an option. Option one, pull it out, okay? It's vicious, it feels like you're gonna break the plane in half and you might. But you see what I just did there? See how that is like pulled out? Now the other side's good, okay? So we're golden on the other side. I'm gonna just do this right, okay? I'm gonna actually take and peel off any excess just cause it's real easy to get to right now. And then I'm gonna take and put a little bit more glue on the inside here and a little bit here. And then I'm not gonna spread a lot more on this surface. Now, why would you use this when you could just use CA? The reason you would do this is because this is gonna be more of a rubbery bite. And the bite is what you want when you're putting together a plane like this because this thing will probably never come apart unless you do it right away. Now, also you can use a product called Kicker or Accelerator to make your CA quicker. You can also use Kicker and Accelerator to break down the bond of that glue. Catch, you're gonna make this paint come off of this plane, I guarantee it. If you use Kicker on this product, it will come off. I've had it happen before and it happens every time. You will make a weak bond between, look how nice that is now, see? Tight and tight. See, tight and tight. Mm -hmm. So we're good now. Okay, if at first you don't get it right, watch the video three times and try it again. Seriously, because that was kind of hard. The other thing is when you're pressing, I wanna, I wanna stress this for a minute. I made one little stress fracture here, okay? I don't know how you could do it any other way. You see that? I squished. Squish. You gotta spread out your hand as much as possible. You certainly can't grab the elevator. You might rip that off. You push, okay? So otherwise we're golden. Looks beautiful though. Mm -hmm. I'm loving the way this has gone together. That glue is a little bit tricky. Should be no problem, especially if you use CA. CA is easy. It'll take a second. Do not use kicker. Just put the CA on there, on the tail surface or inside the hole, slide it in and leave it. If you must use kicker, if you must, because you're super impatient, put the glue on the inside of the hole, turn the plane on its side like this, put a little bit of glue, a little bit of glue, spread it around quick, it will probably try to dry on you, kicker the wings, stick it in and you're done. You will not get a second chop. Okay, antennae, antennas. I had somebody tell me they're actually called antennas. You know why it's white? Because that's where this antenna goes. Oh, there you go. I love the looks of this plane. This thing is really well done. I am surprised how detailed this is. And mm -hmm. I said I was gonna try without a plane stand. I failed miserably. We are gonna put a plane stand out because I think this plane deserves to be protected from itself. All right, so it's dropped on there. Um, camera crew, would you slide that over to me? Move the drop tanks, okay. So same thing we're gonna do here, real simple. Just a little bit of application of this glue. Those decals match that paint perfect. Yeah, they do. Amazing. We have seen that a few times here and there, but I'll be honest with you, look how good the plastic matches too. You do not always get a good match for the record. Mm -mm. Part of the reason that we have a channel here is because when you're buying stuff online, it's always kind of nice to know if you're gonna get something as good as you think you're gonna get. I'm gonna let that cook off for a minute. And then what we're gonna do is there's three more antennas this one's vertical, I can tell for sure. Also, if you have to transport your, your, your planes in a car or truck or something like that, always be note 
uh, think about how it's gonna sit in your car. Sometimes the antennas get in the way. So you may not actually wanna add the antennas on every plane, mm -hmm. especially not the glue on type, okay? They are the first things to break off when you have a bad landing or whatever it is. That thing looks sweet. I am super impressed with how good that looks. It's just such a great size. Yeah, 1.1 is nice. I mean, we've had a lot of 1.2s, we've had a lot of 1.5s, we've had a lot of 1. Points, well, not a lot of, just a, a few 1.7s. 1.4s, true. 1.3s. 1.1 is a nice size class, but yeah. I must say, they usually fly worse. So we're gonna see if this one does the same thing. Why do they fly worse? They got a smaller wing. Yeah. So every time that they change the scale of the aircraft down, they usually have to change the aspect ratio of something. Mm. And so they end up looking wonky or they fly too fast or they fly too slow or they're not ballsy enough because you can't support the amount of electronics needed. So we'll find out if this one's gonna be good. I see where one antenna goes. I just can't tell where the last one goes. Oh, it looks one like they're there. all three up here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'll just do a little bit of goop here. Not to be confused with goop brand glue, which is a thing. I actually love it, by the way. Yes, use it you, all the time. Goop is one of those products that, you know, they make the shoe goop stuff. And I discovered that you can use it and they sell it in like the plumbing aisle at uh, Menards or Home Depot or whatever. And you can glue pipes together and stuff like that. I usually don't do that. I make seals around the wire connections. Too much goop in here. So because I over gooped it, I'm just gonna take the excess off and that'll be available for the next one. Put your guess in the video comments below. Wonder what that could be. Obviously the camera crew knows. Yes. She knows all these things. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and glue this here. And if you're careful, you might actually catch a glimpse of the humanoids that are working on said project, whatever it is. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and, this antenna is super small. Gosh, I can barely get glue on there because it's so dinky. This would be a time when CA would be kind of nice. I've got the antenna backward in my hand, so I gotta spin the plane. Sorry, guys. This one's just so dinky. There's just like nothing to it. It's gonna goop everywhere. Mm. Oh, by the way, if it goops everywhere and you want to figure out the best way to get that goop cleaned up, there's two trains of thought. One, just wipe it up quickly as soon as you realize that there is a spill or a mess, which I'm going to do in this case. Okay. And it's super easy to get off of there. But then option two is you let it dry. And what happens is it ends up being like a bowl that kind of sticks out of the joint. And you can go in there with needle nose pliers and just peel it right off. And that plane is absolutely gorgeous. Hope it flies as good as it looks, because if it does, it's gonna be a keeper. All right, so now we have to put the prop on, and this is the time where I need to make this safety disclaimer, guys. Anything you watch on Brian Phillips RC, do it at your own risk, be careful. Don't cut yourself. Give yourself the best fighting chance at success, especially if you're new at the hobby. There's two things to get people hurt in this hobby, generally speaking, and there's always freak incidences but generally speaking, it's batteries and props. Props cut people because they put them on and then they start the plane, something goes wrong, it cut, you know, throttle comes on and they get cut. Don't be that guy. I've got people that are rooting for me to get cut and that's just the way it is. So anyway, I've been cut before for the record. I have cut myself on camera with X-Acto knives multiple times. I have also cut myself on camera, that plane right there, Commander UMX. I don't know yep. if I did that on camera though. I don't know if you did that on camera. Either. I was doing a radio setup thing and I got really, really in depth because I was trying to add flaps. And I did add flaps. And you want to know how I did it, Mike? I did it by adding a second receiver. Look at that. Did you know you can bind multiple receivers to one DSMX? Did you know that did one I know that? No, did you? Look. I, yeah. There's a hex drive. And that's what actually holds onto your prop. Pretty amazing. That does look pretty good. Okay, so I'm gonna just crank this down. 
oh man. See, there's nowhere to put a screw, so I guess that is what it is. Mm. That's as tight as this, that is beautiful. I love the way that looks. What do you think, camera crew? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we need to mark the CG. We're gonna do that next. It's sort of strange little movie magic there we paused. Uh, we need to go to 60 millimeters. We just took the opportunity. Okay, so 60 millimeters is from the leading edge of the wing. Now, why am I marking the top of the wing? Just because that's kind of the way I'm gonna hold it. Ah, oh, man, missed the mark again, see? It's this beautiful molded line. Okay, so I just made a little bit of a bump. And then I'm just gonna go in there with the tip of my regular felt marker, uh, Sharpie. And then what we'll do is we'll flip the plane upside down to actually test the CG. So if you guys don't know what the CG is, the center of gravity, I wouldn't suggest you probably start with an F4U Corsair. They tend to be a little bit harder to fly than some other models of airplane, okay? It has to do with just the wing design and the style of plane. Now, don't hear that for more than it is. It, I'm not saying they're hard to fly. I'm not saying they're bad flying, any of that. What I am saying is that they tend to be harder than their peer. So like a P-51 versus F4U, a T-28 versus an F4U. All things considered, they're gonna tend to be just slightly harder to fly because they bite a little bit harder when you mess up, okay, because of the wing design. Okay, so we've got the NX-8 and we have the AR-630. So we're gonna jump straight into radio setup. We need a 2200 3S pack. So we've got a Gen 1 and a Gen 2 charging. We'll see which one fits better. Sometimes you need to go for a bigger battery or a smaller battery to get your battery uh, to make your CG on a plane like this because of the way that the battery slides inside of it. You may find that a heavier battery is the only way you can make CG without adding uh, nose weight or tail weight. If your center of gravity is not right, then your plane is gonna be either tail heavy or it's gonna be nose heavy where it leans forward. In our case, we're holding the plane upside down. So let's just see, without a battery, it's sort of stupid to even try, but without a battery, it's obviously tail heavy because there needs to be a battery in there to make up some of that nose weight too, okay? Same thing would be true to a degree if you had a fuel in your airplane, except usually the fuel goes at the center of gravity so that it doesn't change when you run out of fuel. So that being said, the center of gravity is important to get right. Be careful about those gear door when you put that on your plane stand, by the way. The center of gravity needs to be right. Otherwise, if you're tail heavy, the plane will fly super pitchy, really sensitive on the elevator, understable, okay? And if you're nose heavy, it's gonna be very not pitchy and very light on the elevator, meaning that you have to give it full elevator to make changes. Sometimes you can't even pull up. If you find yourself in that situation, deploy flaps to the maximum output and your elevator will be amplified. Okay, it should help you get out of hot water. Also, there'll be a ballooning effect that we're gonna mix out with the radio. But if you didn't already know that, when you deploy flaps on an inboard flap, meaning on the inside of the wing, ailerons are on the outboard portion of the wing, there's typically a ballooning effect where the plane will lift, it will go up, because you produce more lift and consequently more drag at the same time. And so that lift and drag has a tendency to make the plane go up, nose up. Okay, that's why we have an elevator compensation and we have a two second deployment speed that we usually run for elevator and flaps. So if you didn't already know that, now you know that. All right, so, and you can play with that on your own and see kind of what you think of this is the AR630, super simple. Where's the antenna, Brian? The antenna is built in. It's actually on this board. If I were to pull the sticker off, you'd see a little trace that goes back and forth. It's built into the board. AR631 is the same, um, I think it's like a $5 price difference. But the thing is that one has an external antenna, a singular external antenna. AR637T would be the next step up for that. That's gonna give you the same six channels, but it's gonna add full range telemetry and two antennas, which would be a diversity antenna and then AR8263. If I said that right, did I say that right? I think that's I think right. I said it right. Yep. That one's gonna be eight channels plus telemetry and you can do 10, you can do 12, you could do 14, you can do 16, you can do 20. It's kind of, the sky's the limit. Yeah. Check the link in the video description below if you wanna buy anything that's outside of this. We usually link to the uh, receiver that we used in a given plane and we link to the list of transmitters. Um, we don't usually recommend you get the transmitter 
package deal because a lot of times it doesn't have AS3X. The AR630 has AS3X and safe. 31 has AS3X and safe. The AR637T has AS3X and safe. Same thing with the 8260, AS3X and safe, plus full telemetry there. But what I'm getting at is you don't wanna get an AR620 if you need AS3X and safe, unless it's coming equipped in one of the new arrows that comes with a, what do they call theirs? The vector. The vector. Stabilizer. Okay, so the yep. vector uh, is an external stabilizer that you could use an AR620. The catch is with three tracks, you don't have enough channels because you have throttle, elevator, rudder, ailerons, flaps, and retracts in no particular order. So if you need to turn on auto leveling or change conditions from stabilization to no stabilization to auto leveling, any of those three conditions, you need an extra channel. So just keep that in mind. You could always not use the retracts. You could always not use the flaps, but that would be super lame. So what you'll need to do is go up to an eight channel receiver if you go that route, or you can use the six channel receiver and tie that stabilizer on off to another function. Again, also lame in my opinion, but a lot of guys do it. So some people like to set up like flaps when it's in full flap mode, you've got stabilizer on auto leveling because that's the way they land. You know what? Fine. But at the, at the end of the day, it's up to you guys how you do it. If you're new and you need stabilization and auto leveling, just set it up so it's on. You'll be golden then. Um, if you need AS3X or stabilizer, just set it up so you have the stabilizer on all the time and you can't even use auto leveling. I just don't like the trade off. So another thought, if you must do it with six channels, I recommend giving up rudder. It's the worst, you need, rudder is a primary flight control surface, right? but it's the one that you can give up and still fly. You can still retract, you can still flaps, you can still ailerons, but then you lose rudder so you can't coordinate your turns. So what some people do is a little trick called ailerons and rudder are plugged in together. And yes, you can do that. And then you wanna know how you do that? You take this hole, see how it's in the outside? You either extend that and make it longer, or you look at this little servo in here that goes to the rudder which is this one also goes to the steerable tail wheel. See how it's on like the third of four holes? You would take that all the way to the inside. You'd have a tie between this and your ailerons. Hmm. Yep. So then you can use your ailerons to actually yaw the plane a little bit and also ground handle. Mm. So just a, just a tip, another trick of the day for Brian Phillips RC. If you haven't ever heard of that, you just heard of from Brian Phillips today. So, all right, so radio setups next. We're gonna show you how we're gonna do it in our configuration. We're gonna have AS3X and safe. Excuse me, guys. Put your guess in the comments below. If you wanna look inside of here with me, camera crew, let's talk about where we could potentially plug this in. Now, this is a spatially aware receiver, meaning that it, it can be mounted sideways, it can be mounted sideways. It can actually be mounted in any incidental degree. They suggest here, 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 here. Now, the only reason they suggest those things is because they don't want you in this ambiguous middle ground area where you're 45 degrees, okay? Flat, whoops, flat. That's the best of your life. The only worst to come, AR 630. You could do 90 degrees, you could do upside down. I think you can even do this, but I've mm -hmm. never done that. I know for a fact you could do straight, you can do reverse, you can do upside down, you can do sideways. But the thing is, I wanna warn you, it does get very confusing if you go anywhere between 90s. So like, let's say you're 40 degrees off because you're mounted on the side of a can, like inside of a canopy like this. Is that this way or this way? I don't know. You're gonna have to make sure your control axis are correct. There is a safe correction for that. And you can correct what your, uh, it'd be a roll access would, would do, but the problem is the machine is gonna be, have a hard time distinguishing between this position and this position. So just pick one, be a little bit closer to this or a little bit closer to that. Also, when you then pitch the aircraft, it's gonna be weird. It's gonna act like a V-tail. So just pick a 90 degree, and if you can't find a 90 degree, glue the thing sideways like this. Be creative. If you're in this hobby, you're creative enough to figure out most of this stuff without me telling you. But 
The reason we tell you is that you don't have to immediately figure everything out because when you get into this hobby, you're gonna be like, holy crap, there's so much stuff, I don't know where to start. That's why you're here. Start here, you'll start picking stuff up really quick, I promise. Okay, so if I wanna get my battery in and out, mm -hmm. I can't mount it there, obviously. If I wanna get my battery in and out, I could mount this there and that'd be totally fine, right? It's still gonna be kinda tight. Mm -hmm. I don't like that so much. Can you I, mount it down in that cavity? Yes, but then I got all the wires to deal with. So I would probably lean toward mounting it like that. So I'll get everything wired up, plugged in, and then I can get down to the mine plug and I'll mount it like that. Or you can mount it to the top of the wing, but then you've got that multi, you know, joiner board or whatever. You could also mount it to the side here, provided we don't dip down in, but we do dip down in. So if you do that, you have to kind of fall down here and you see how much you don't have much to purchase. But if you bring it back like this, you can actually mount that right in there. That's a pretty sweet spot. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Especially with that end pin. Yep. See what I'm talking about? Now, is that is that 90 degrees of the aircraft? Nope. No. It's not 90 degrees this way, and it's not 90 degrees this way. So what does that mean for your airplane? Is it gonna fly like crap? Probably not. Because remember, it's looking at change of position, okay? Ow. It's not like straight up GPS. There's two ways you can resolve that. One, you can just kick it out at an angle and just glue it from the bottom so that it's in straight line with the plane. Two, you can shim it out so that it's shimmed out with a little bit of material here, whether that be foam, you can carve a little bit of foam off sacrificially here or here or somewhere else. And you can stuff that in there and glue it in. Or you could just put it flat. Or you could just, so really the options are somewhat endless, but I think camera crew and I came up with the best option at the beginning, which is here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do radio setup. Now, why do we need to go back to the radio for this next step, camera crew? So we know where to plug things in. Yep. Now, if you're super privy to these receivers, you've probably already figured this out. So it's not a big deal. We're not trying to talk down to anybody. And hope you guys don't get that impression. We know that there's a mixed audience on this channel. So we have to go way back to the basics on some stuff and then some stuff we kind of get a little bit advanced on. So it just depends on who you are and whether or not you're advanced. I don't know that, so I have to guess, all right? So this plane is not probably a first plane, but it would be like a second, third, fourth plane, something like that would be totally realistic. Keep in mind, again, Corsair, lots of P factor, which means when you're going to take off, it wants to flip over on itself and crash. You have to counter that. Also, it's gonna wanna tip forward and chop the prop into the ground. Very common problems, you have to overcome them. That is a skill and practice thing. You either have the skill naturally, which you won't, unless you're superhuman, or you've practiced a lot to build the skill. 99.999% of the people have to practice to get it, and then everybody else is a jerk, and I don't like you. Because <laughs> it's hard. So you have to balance the rudder. There's gonna be a yaw moment, it's gonna pull you. And so this is pointed down and to the right to help counter that. And as you start throttling up, it's also gonna to wanna to spin the aircraft, okay? So all those things are in play and it's gonna to wanna to pull the nose down. So what you end up with is like, okay, so you're holding your sticks, this is throttle, this is rudder, this is ailerons, and this is elevator. So you're gonna be throttle up as gentle as possible, get the tail whale up in the air, bounce it forward, balance, rudder, 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 off the ground, let it float, pull up, and then fly. So that's the movements you do. It's not one movement, it's like seven movements, mm -hmm. and they are contrary, they're contrary movements. Meaning that what you're trying to do when you fly an aircraft is different than driving because when you drive, you let go of the wheel, what happens? You pretty much go straight, okay? If you crank the wheel to the right, what happens? You let go, it kind of centers out and goes straight down the road, okay? You crank the wheel all the way, you turn into a parking spot, you let go, what happens? It just keeps going, right? An airplane is more like the ladder. You change the direction of travel and it keeps going that direction, unless you have auto leveling. That's what SAFE does, sensorated flight envelope. SAFE runs on AS3X, which is auto, artificial three axis stabilization, or artificial stabilization three axis, AS3X. That's the technology that keeps track of this positionally. It knows when there's a movement, it knows when there's a movement, and it knows when there's a movement. And then it responds accordingly with output to the control surfaces 
in those parameters, okay? So this is all configurable, it's all programmable. We'll show you exactly how to do that. Now, if you add safe on top of that, which is just another setting, we'll show you how to set up. Safe will then automatically level the plane. When you let go of the sticks, it's gonna bring it level or it's gonna bring it level or whatever direction you have this. And the orientation is something we set in the settings. You don't need to know how it works, you just need to know that it does work. But knowing how it works helps you to set this stuff up. So that's why we go into great detail here, Brad Phillips RC, and we hope that nobody ever talks us out of it because the thing is, there's not a lot of people out there teaching this stuff. So we're gonna teach you here. All right, so the plane's facing us, a bad time for setup with the plane facing you because you're vulnerable in case it attacks. Leave your guess in the comments. All right, NX8, we're gonna turn it on. Okay, so it's on right now. I'm gonna click, scroll all the way down, add new model, create an acro. I accidentally covered that up with my thumb so you guys couldn't see what the other new models were. It's not like you're not already gonna know. It does take a few seconds, by the way, when you start getting a million in there. Model select is where we just came from. Model type, it's already set as acro. If you reset that, it'll clear everything. Model name, this is gonna be the F4U Corsair. And we'll scroll this in. I use a legacy keyboard, by the way. You guys will have a different keyboard if you don't set it back to the legacy keyboard. All right, so we got the F4U for Corsair by Arrows. And I'm just noticing I don't have a room for a 1.1, so I'm gonna show you a trick. Clear that, and then clear that, and then watch. I wanna put the 1.1 over here. So what you could do. Okay, so what you gotta do is if you scroll over here, you can go minus, see? And I wanna take this and do another minus. It's a minus or a plus. You can add a space or you can subtract a space. It took me a long time to figure that out on, by accident. So then I can type in, because I didn't have enough characters, 1.1 meter. Did that not go? <sighs> Are you still out? Am I still out? I think I'm out. Hmm. How about I just do F4? So I'll go over to this and I'll hit minus, and then that should give us enough characters to do one. That's weird. Why won't Maybe it do a one? Maybe figure out how to abbreviate arrows, like AR. How about we just do this? Watch this. Plus, I think we found a software glitch. Because watch this. I better work now. Nope. How about I do this? One. Oh, you know why? Why? I bet it won't let you do it because the file name won't allow for it. 1.1. So it takes a lot more effort when you're doing an insert here than if you were to just do it right the first time. Okay, 1.1 meter. So I'm gonna try to insert again. And so for those of you that aren't aware, there is a new keyboard that's out and the new keyboard uh, updates automatically when you update your firmware. But if you already have a setup in here, it'll keep it where it needs to be. See, there we go. We can take out the double, a, the double R arrows. Arrow, arrow. It's just going to look like I didn't know how to spell. <laughs> <laughs> You're right there. Okay. All right. Eh, well, no. All right. So then the aircraft type you want normal. You're going to switch that over to one aileron, one flap and normal tail. You can just look at the aircraft and kind of tell, and you're like, but Brian, there's two flaps and there's two ailerons. How come there's only one shown? Well, that's because that's one channel of assignment there, okay? Then there is an F4U Corsair in here. Booyah, right there, okay. Flight mode setup. We're gonna set our retracts, excuse me, that's flaps. We're gonna set our retracts here, flaps here. So then this one is gonna be for our flight modes. So switch D, you'll notice it says one, two, three. Now you can go to next and you can uh, do some different things there, but we're not gonna mess with them. You can change your uh, spoken flight mode. Uh, this is where you would take your flight mode and you would make your name, okay? This is what it says, this is what the name is. So you can name it whatever you want, double cancel to clear it. And then in my case, I'm gonna set the top one for AS3X. AS3X, so we'll just stay live for this instead of pausing AS3X. 
We'll give them more time to guess in the comments below. Yeah, please guess. What's going on? AS3X, and then you can scroll all the way down. For this, we will pause. There's save we just passed in AS3X mode. AS3X mode. Okay, hit back, whoops. Flight mode two, we're gonna set to probably, excuse me, off. Okay, so O, F, F, and then I wanna change this to off, which I think is also down below, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, almost all the way bottom. All the way at the bottom. Okay, so it's about there, off. Yes, your X mode, off. And then this will be safe. Now remember, this doesn't set safe AS3X or off. It right. just names the switch condition and the response for the audio event. You can do it in another way through switch events as well. But if you do switch events and the spoken flight mode, it will speak both and it's annoying. Okay. Oh, it would? Yep. Sometimes Ooh. it doesn't have time to do both. Yeah. I also wish there was a way to speed up the duration of the speak. Yeah. So you could say, AS3X off. I want her to be like, AS3X off. Yeah. Quick, because things happen fast in here. Okay, so now flight mode three, we're gonna go into that. We're gonna change the name, double click, cancel, cancel. Now, again, this is just how you name it. And comprehensive build videos is part of the hallmarks of Brian Phillips RC. If you don't like the comprehensive build videos, then just stay tuned. Basically, what you want to do is watch the first part where we fly the airplanes. And if you think the rest is boring, we're here to serve you guys in the community. So just skip that part. You're not going to hurt our feelings. Wait. Uh, what? That's supposed to be safe. I'm sorry, guys. That's supposed to say safe. You're not going to hurt our feelings. Just watch what you need to watch. Watch what helps you. And the one thing I would ask is that if I cover it in the video, please don't ask in the comments because there are thousands of videos. It is hard for me to remember some of the stuff I yeah, show you. Yeah, the real specific stuff. And again, hear me the way I'm mean to say that, and that is I'm not trying to be mean, I'm not trying to take anything away from a quick question. You gotta remember a quick question asked by 100,000 people takes a lot of time. Well, you just don't remember after a I while. I can't remember a lot of the yeah. stuff because I'm like, I don't know what battery we used in that. I can't remember. This one's safe, right? Mm -hmm. They're safe. Excuse me. Okay, so we've got all three set. And then channel assign uh, auxiliary B, or auxiliary two is always assigned to B. So I'm gonna actually unassign that by clicking and then scrolling to inhibit, okay? And then I'm gonna go right knob for three, right here. Okay, that's gonna be our master gain. So we'll leave that on auxiliary three, okay? So you'll note that we use all eight channels. And you're like, but Brian, that's only an AR630. Why are you using eight channels? Because eight channels exist on this. It's actually nine channels. But the thing is, you can only tap into eight of them. I believe there's a ninth channel in there too. But either way, these channels are all accessible through a D, uh, a, the NX, NX8. You can also use DX8 too. I slipped and said that, but I mean, the NX8 is the latest and greatest and the processor's faster. There will come a time when your DX8 is not gonna keep up with the, te the technology for the firmware update. And I just need you to be aware of it. Even my DX18 is slow. It barely runs, but it does do forward programming. Just so you know. Put your guess in the comments below. All right, so now that we have that done, let's come back around. We're not quite done. As you can see. Cool, right? Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into dual rates and expo, set that up right now. We're gonna set it to switch F. On F, you're gonna make the bottom setting 10, then you're gonna make, excuse me, five, then 10, then 20. So we have like a halving and a doubling effect. And in the this, we're gonna reduce the rate, okay? We're gonna leave the rate at 100, we're gonna leave the rate at 100. So this is where we're gonna take off right here. If there's more expo needed, we'll have a doubling effect. If there's less expo needed, we'll have a halving effect. When we land, we'll make the adjustment. If any of the three axis need more, we go to more. If any of the three axis need less, you're pretty much stuck with it and you move the stick further, mm. okay? And then you would yep. adjust on the ground. When you land, you'll make your adjustments to that control axis only. And I have done that several times. Usually elevators are about the only thing I have to adjust. Mm -hmm. Everything else is usually pretty kosher. Oh, excuse me, pretty good. 
Okay, so aileron, then elevator, and remember there's just three axes for expo, but you can technically have expo on throttle too. It's called a throttle curve in that event. Okay, so, the, so this setting's five, then this one's gonna be 10. Ah, dang it. And then 20. So if you guys haven't figured out what's going on on the roof, stay tuned long enough and you'll see. Okay. And then for the rudder, let's switch that to F. We're gonna go to five. Then we're gonna go to 10. And we're gonna go to 20. And just, I don't talk about this much guys, but I love Spectrum equipment. We've been very happy with it. I started on Spectrum. I know Spectrum. I feel like it's the best, cleanest, easiest way for you guys to get started in RC. There are a lot of competitive brands that are very good. That's all that needs to be said. Mm -hmm. I don't know them. That doesn't mean they don't exist. FR Sky, Open Source, um, you know, Jumpers, Radio Master. I know they exist. They're not bad. They do DSMX. They do DSM2. They do DSM. They do, you know, other protocols out there. But because I operate within the spectrum of spectrum, I generally like the user interface of Spectrum Gear. That doesn't mean it's the only one out there. It's just what I know best. So don't hear me when I say that I like Spectrum and they're great and they're the best. That's not what I'm saying. I try not to say that. I just feel like it's a good choice. There are a million choices. There is a lot more expensive than Spectrum, by the way. Uh, so if you think this is bad, go look at the stuff Ramy's using. <laughs> Seriously. You think this is bad? You'll spend that much on a receiver, board, one accessory. That's crazy. I know. Okay, so getting back. Throttle cut. Always want to set that. I don't know why this isn't defaulted, but it isn't. Okay, switch H. So as you can see, when that switch is pulled forward, the throttle cuts on, throttle cuts off. Throttle curve we're not going to mess with. You only you really do that in helicopters, flap system. I'm going to set that to switch B. And do they tell us in this book? No. I don't think they do. They, do. They, they generally don't. This is a real simple manual. They will tell you throws on some of these. Yep, they'll tell you how much they want these control surfaces to move for high rates and low rates. My recommendation, if you really, really, really don't know what you're doing, go ahead and set them to the predictable throws and then you'll be happy with the outcome. I have never done that in my entire time building radio controlled airplanes. True. Never. Now. That means that I've had problems that I shouldn't have had, and some of you guys might be able to avoid them by measuring. I just have never done it. That's not my style. Um, and there's nothing wrong with it. You guys can do it. So uh, this is the flap system. We have associated that with switch B. You can see that little box moves. Okay, so I'm just gonna make a guess. I don't know which direction because they didn't tell us. So one's gonna go one way, one's gonna go the other, and then we're gonna have an elevator correction of something like, let's just try six and 10 to start. Okay. Now the reason I only did 22 and 28 is because I, I just don't care what the setting is. It doesn't matter. I just want to make sure it's going the right direction. Okay. And we're going to set that to a two second deployment speed. Now we will obviously have to address that. So we'll come back out and address that here in a minute. And we're not going to mess with mixing, but if you wanted to do an aileron to rudder mix on a warbird, sometimes that's nice for like an automatic coordination of turns. And when I say coordination of turns, um, you roll the airplane, but then you also want to yaw the plane so that it stays in a flat maneuver, okay? I prefer to control that myself anymore. And the way I've learned, if you're new to flying, I'm gonna jump out of this menu here, is that what you'll do is as you're flying, say your throttle cuts on, good practice. Okay, throttle cuts on, take off, flying around, everything's going just fine, just kind of making some nice turns. What I do is I, I train myself to move both sticks together. And what that does is it, it forces you to do it first of all. Usually you follow just a second later, okay, on the rudder. And this is analog, so you can move a little teeny bit or you can move a lot. But that's why Expo is so nice, which we've tied to switch F. Because if you are trying to make these super finite maneuvers, no matter how skilled you are as a pilot, it's hard to do that, especially on throttle because you're moving up and down. And the muscle memory for this motion is one of the hardest to develop. 
okay? It changes, even for me to point this at the camera, that changes my whole muscle memory. Mm -hmm. Pretty crazy. All right, cool, we're gonna clear that timer. Let's talk about timers now. Okay, so we're gonna go down to timers where we left off. We're gonna turn the one out on. We're gonna leave this, whoops. Previous, one out is on, it's active. And then we're gonna go for one minute, we're gonna inhibit, for 20 seconds, we're gonna inhibit, for 10 seconds to one second, we're gonna do a voice countdown. And then for expiration, tone and vibrate. Then a tone every minute thereafter, and you're ready to rock and roll. So then, when you move over the threshold of 25%, the timer starts and it keeps going. Throttle cuts on, clear the timer with the cancel button, and ready to rock and roll. So, now that we know where all the channels land, we know how to hook it up. And once we're hooked up, then we'll do forward programming for this little guy, and then we'll set up AS3X and safe, and we'll be done. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a pretty safe setup, a pretty simple setup, I should say. And uh, the biggest problem that I have is I don't know who my audience is, so I don't know what I have to go over. So I tend to go over everything. So like if you were my buddy Esteban and you were here, Esteban's one of my friends that I fly with. I know what he knows. And I also know that he um, skips over lots of important details because <laughs> he's kind of like that. And, and I always poke fun of him, but at the same time, I also know what he understands. So I can tailor my message to him because I know who he is. On YouTube, we don't know who we're dealing with. So we have to kind of err on the side of, we assume you know nothing. So if you are like, Brian, you know, I know all that crap. I've been doing this for 30 years. You know, I'm really sorry. Right next to you in the chair next to you in the audience, there's a kid that's like seven years old and he's trying to figure out what throttle is. This is throttle. That's what turns that on. That's what cuts you. Throttle cuts on. Start building the habit today. See, it's hard to do, guys. I'm not trying to be a jerk here. Throttle's on channel one. See how this is laid out? Channel one is the second set of pins. We're not even gonna use a bind plug. We have a push button here, so we'll be pushing that to bind. Now, how do I tell where negative is? Negative plus S. Negative plus S. Negative plus voltage. S for signal. If this was Futaba instead of JR slash Hestronics color code, this would be black, this would be red, and this would be white. Okay, but this is a JR slash Hextronics color code. Okay. Horizon Hobby uses the JR color code usually. Okay. So there's your red. Oh, rudder goes into channel uh, channel four. So total disregard there for a minute. So rudder. And what's, what's next? Let's just do these two first because they're gonna be untwisted. You see how I'm untwisting that? And this is an elevator, and this isn't Horizon. What did, I, what did I say? I said that wrong. What I meant to say was, Arrows, in this case, chose to use the JR Hextronics color code, okay? Just depends on who makes the servos for the particular manufacturer. All right, so then this is um, flaps. So flaps are gonna be on channel. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the sixth channel. And yes, I could probably do this from memory, but I'm actually looking at the screen because I just don't want to, I don't like taking chances on stuff I'm not 100% sure on. And you can take a chance, not a big deal, just test it before you fly. Um, or just better yet, watch our video and follow along exactly if you prefer. Some people do that pretty much all the time. They get a plane. They're like, hey, I'm gonna wait for you to review it, but I bought it from your link because I wanted to support you and your family. And, and make no mistake, guys, when you support me, it's not like you're just like supporting Brian, you're supporting the family. Yes. This is a family affair. The entire family is involved in this project every time there is one. Okay, ailerons on channel two. Then channel one is gonna be throttle, which is pretty common. So we'll just go ahead and grab that. Real long cable on that one, jeez. This also carries the BEC power, okay? So the power is in parallel to all the servos, and there is power that's being produced for the motor to spin, which is like an AC motor. That's why there's three wires. If it was a DC motor, there'd only be two wires. So a brushed motor would be two, and a brushless has three or more, but three usually on the stuff we use in this hobby. And it alternates the different coils to organize the direction of rotation. Okay, so the timing makes the prop spin in a certain direction because as the coil spins, it goes to the next position, then it stops, then it starts, then it stops, 
then it starts, then it stops, and so on and so forth until it gets it into a spinning motion. Now that would be in milliseconds, of course. And then it spins this thing and it's powered, right? Well, that's one half or actually probably more like five sixths of the power that's being generated by the ESC. It's being converted from DC power in a battery to essentially what is an AC frequency here. It's actually not AC, but just take my word for it. Then we're also producing a DC voltage and that's gonna be used for the receiver, for the radio in there, for all the ESC, or all the servos, and the servos move the control surfaces, which while you're playing, this also manages all the different computerized circuitry. It all runs on that, okay? So the stabilizer, everything, it's all happening from the BEC or the SBAC, which is just another way, it's like a switching battery eliminator circuit. Battery eliminator circuit is what BEC stands for. Okay, ESC is electronic speed control or electronic speed controller, depending on who you ask. Okay, so see this, I got all my wires landed. Now we have to decide on mounting this. You could mount it first or whatever. It doesn't really matter which direction you do it in. Now, we've also found that it works nicely on some planes to go ahead and use like a Velcro patch or something that you can stick this down. And then if you need to get in there and work on it sometime in the future, maybe you change your wing type or maybe you get a new control surface you add into a plane. Like for instance, on this, you know, over here we get this Boeing 737 MAX 9. You know, we want to add some flaps to that, let's say. Then you could do that. And you can always just plug those in later and then come back and change the configuration. So if you got Velcro, Velcro is a good way to cheat and do that. Let's see what we got here. Some Velcro. I keep everything, my wife hates it. Mm -hmm. But then when I need stuff, I have it. When we moved from our old house to this house, which happened how many years ago? Is that like about three, three years ago or so? Mm -hmm. It was terrible because we had to throw away so much stuff. And I was like, I need that stuff. And it's so funny because my wife is like, you've never used it in 12 years. And I'm like, two weeks later, what do you know? We needed all that crap. Because when you first move into an empty house, you got all sorts of projects you got to do. We didn't need all of it. We needed a lot of it. Remember all that lumber we had? Goodness gracious, today, you could you'd probably pay off the mortgage just with that probably lumber. Could. We that <laughs> probably could, probably should have kept the lumber. <laughs> so anyway, so we hired some college kids to like take our garbage out. Oh my goodness. I've never paid people to take garbage before, but the people that bought our house were so nice. They gave us like three extra days after we sold them the house to get our yeah. crap out of there. I couldn't believe it. Because someone thought that they could pack and move their shop in one day. Who was that again? I don't know. I don't remember. I don't know who would be so this stupid. This is not very smart. <laughs> um, also, um, okay, so funny little secret. <laughs> in the attic, <laughs> you know, all those boxes. We used to not really have a good way of getting rid of them. So we kept all of them. Like yeah. all of them. Like all. Like we probably had 50 like of them in the attic. The foam. The foam and everything. The boxes. And so <laughs> we were using them for extra insulation in our attic. <laughs> I mean, it was just like everywhere. So they may or may not still be in that house. If you happen to buy the house and you find a bunch of empty boxes in there, you can thank Megan for that. You're welcome. You are going to move them all. You were gonna like put them on a trailer no, and I wasn't bring them here to them. this house. We did, need to we did need to throw them away. We had to get rid of them somehow. So if you guys have funny stories, leave them in the comments below. We always appreciate a good chuckle when we're reading through the comments. And yes, I do try to get to comments 100% of them. It's hard to do that when you start getting to a sizable channel. And even though we're, our channel's still small in the grand scheme of things, there's enough people that ask a lot of, com uh, a lot of questions. And uh, I try my best to get back to people as quick as we can, but you know, we do have things going on too and lots of video production. Hey, I need, can I show them that up a little bit closer? Yeah. Got it in there. But I was thinking about this wire here because that's going to be kind of a pain. Yeah. With the you battery. know what? I have an idea. Let me grab the X-Acto knife. I'm going to show you guys the trick of the day number 14. Trick of the day number 14 coming up. So if you guys have never done this, get ready to live. So check this out. If you have a wire that's pesky in a foam plane, remember foam is a different media. Some of you guys have been doing balsa wood for years and you really don't know anything about foam, okay? And a lot of you guys in balsa hate foam and I don't understand why. I mean, it's like the most beautiful scale planes that we're getting these days are made of foam. 
yeah, but I want it out of balsa. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. That's great. You don't have to hate on foam just because you love balsa. I love both. I need to check something. There's a block that goes in here. Okay. So you see that block? Mm. I need to pay special attention to how far down that goes. Looks like it makes it about, yeah, it's going to be tight. So here's what I'm doing. I'm taking the knife. I'm going to cut a channel from whence this wire can chase. From whence? From whence. Sorry. See what I did? I just made a little channel and I'm just going to carry this channel and I might as well carry it all the way until about yonder. <laughs> it's like 1763. Yes. Obviously. Whoa. I don't know if YouTube was around then, camera crew. Seriously, get your facts straight. See this? Let's see if I can get that in there. So basically what I've done is I've created a channel to park this wire in. And sometimes it works really good and other times it doesn't work really good. Um, but all I'm trying to do is I'm envisioning problems getting batteries in and out every single mm -hmm. time I go to use this plane. And so I'm just going to make a little channel. I'm just going to slide that wire in there. And it feels like I finally got decent penetration there. Okay. So once it's in there, then I can just chase the wire and that will buy us a little bit of flexibility. Excuse me. I cut that too close to the bottom. It's just wanting to flop opened. You guys see what's going on there? Mm -hmm. I can fix that though. You know how to fix that when you do that? Make a bigger hole. Make another channel. Yep, mm. that's right. And I'm just doing whatever I do here. It's not gonna hurt structural stability of the plane. I'm just making a small channel. I mean, you don't wanna like do that on a, a spot where you're gonna see everything, obviously. And then of course, this is just kinda, anything you can do to manage your cables better is generally good. Um, but you gotta be careful that you don't want these cables to get cut, guys. And it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know if you guys have experienced the same thing, but I've seen a lot of guys are not very careful with their cabling. And um, then they wonder why they have problems with servos. Cause like, honestly, we've had pretty good luck with servos. I mean, I'm not saying we've never had one go bad, but I mean, I usually earn it. Right. It's usually my fault because I like crash the plane or whatever. Okay. So you see how that separated the black and red wire there? Because evidently the screwdriver is just a little bit too tight. So if you guys haven't figured out what's going on on the roof, leave your guesses in the comments below and we will, are we going to show them? Well, well, I think we're going to have to tell them. At some point? Okay. We'll let you guys know what's going on. Your guesses are welcome. Okay, so now that it's in there, it's not like it even has to stay in there on its own because all you really need is a little bit of clear tape or something. And all I'm gonna do is just put a little bit of tape over the wire and that's just gonna hold it so it's out of the way in a somewhat permanent fashion. Sorry that didn't go quite as smooth as I had hoped. I ended up cutting too low on this little portion. So my apologies there, guys. Just cut yours a little bit higher and you'll have better luck. But you see? Just get that stuff out of there. And then back here where we have to be getting in and out to load the battery will hopefully not become somewhat of an issue for us at some point. Okay? So again, we're just trying to hold the wire in place. That's it. Now when we go to get the battery in and out every 14, 15 times or flying this in the next few weeks, we won't have any issues. Right. So speaking of batteries, let's come over here and talk about batteries for a quick sec. Okay. So basically when it comes down to batteries, uh, what we've got here is uh, smart batteries. We've got a gen two here, which has no balance lead. And we have a gen one here. Looks like this one's done. Uh, 4.2 volts per cell and this one I don't understand what the deal is here I'm gonna plug this one back in and see if I can get that voltage reading Sometimes these g2 chargers if they don't immediately recognize the battery 
you're like, what the heck is going on? And I've noticed that sometimes if you plug in your battery too quick when you first cycle this, it'll go dumb on you. Mm. So let's just plug it into the XPC. Very interesting. I wonder what the deal is with that. Because I wonder if I'm not getting contact from my smart lead. That's bizarro. I'm going to click. See, there's no smart lead. There's no smart communication going on. I wonder what the deal is. You know what? So I started another battery here. We're going to just plug this in. Just show you what it should look like. Initiating smart charging. Very simple stuff. Okay. So every once in a blue moon, you may get a battery that does this to you. And I'm not sure what the exact remedy is. You plug it in. Now this should jump over to channel two after it recognizes that a battery has been plugged in. But if not, I'm going to switch over. And you'll see it's still got the same data from before. So it's like it's not waking up the system. I don't know what to do about that yet, guys. If you've figured it out, let me know in the comments below because I am genuinely concerned and questioning exactly what the best recourse is. And obviously, if you get a battery that's acting weird, best thing you could do, reach out to Horizon. Now, the good news is we're gonna have our voltage there because that's 12.69 volts, which is correct. The bad news is I don't know why it's not giving me telemetry data because there is telemetry data coming out of this pack or should be. So maybe I'll quarantine that battery for a little bit and we'll come back to it. And just to give you an idea, we got lots of batteries here. Here's another Gen 2. Um, looks like that one's a 3S. And we must have put that in a helicopter because I think we rubbed the bottom of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a Gen, Gen 2. Yep, see, and it just starts charging. So that's the way that should go. So anyway, this one here has the balance lead. So because it has a balance lead, we can always just plug that in and see what's going on. So I like to use Gen 1 packs in these systems. Why? So you can use a voltage one. Yep. Now, if you use an Avian ESC in one of these planes, which is a significant cost, then you can actually get your feedback through the AR630 and you'll have telemetry of not only your pack voltage, if you're using a smart battery, you'll get the cell voltage as well, which is really nice. Because really the per cell voltage is what you need in a smart or any other type of battery. Okay, so this is just a little voltage alarm. That's what we like to use. So for that reason, on planes that don't come equipped with an AVN ESC, we end up using this. Or if you have an AR637T, then you would get barometer, which gives you altitude and barrio, as well as the battery pack, which gives you the telemetry voltage for your pack voltage, but not the per cell. Okay. It does a conglomerate, like whatever the voltage is divided by the number of cells, but that's the best guess you get. Okay. This will actually tell you a warning at whatever the voltage is set to. So let's click the button and show them. So it's set to 3.4, 3.6 off. So I'd probably set a plane like this. I'd probably set it to like 3.3. That doesn't mean the ESC won't go to a cutoff, a low voltage cutoff or low voltage you know, like slow down effect, okay? So you just never know until you find out. I don't know, but you'll find out in the video when we do, because we tend to run these things until they're dead, okay? So nice mid quality straps, not the highest quality, not the lowest quality, but since you're in an, you know, an environment where you can take the thing out, this is the most adjustment you're gonna have for CG. And keep in mind, you're adjusting it like this, so there's hardly any spatial difference. So you're not gonna really get a big difference. You're gonna have to go to a bigger battery or a smaller battery. Now, the other thing I have on good word from Eros and from personal experience is that their 3S rated equipment generally will handle a 4S, okay? Now, I'm not gonna fly this on 4S necessarily right off, but a lot of guys have done it and a lot of guys have found success. In fact, what does the box say? The box says right here, it says 11.1 volts, 3S, 25C recommended. Okay, that is a recommended battery. They haven't expressly prohibited the use, but it does only have a 40 amp ESC. So I guess the rule of thumb is you can do your Ohm's law and figure out the math for what the maximum current draw would be on a motor. And my camera crew is giving me 
the big cringy face. And the reality is I just put in the battery and if the thing blows smoke, then you'll know it's too much. Yeah. There are people that do math and stuff. Oh. The guys that are in Shenzhen designing these things okay. do. Well, I'll leave the math to them. Yep. Okay, so you'll note that, that that does have a little bit of slippage because I wasn't super tight on it. We are just doing radio setup after all. Okay. Interestingly enough, that fits very nicely and there is definitely room for a 4S for what it's worth, but we haven't seen what the CG looks like. So what I'm gonna do is since this is the first time we've actually done this, I have to use some extra caution, okay? See how this screen is in the monitor? The monitor shows what the channels are. Why do you keep going back there? We're gonna do the binding, okay? okay? So I'm gonna go back to the regular mode, <clears throat> throttle six down, throttle cuts on, excuse me, clear the timer. I'm gonna click and scroll down to bind. You can also just turn this thing off if you want. We have disconnected RF at this point, and when I go into bind, it's gonna bind. Okay, so I'm gonna plug in the XT60 to the IC3. These are not compatible, but they work. You can get adapters if you want. Okay, plugged in. Now, nothing should happen until I click this button. Now it's in, okay, so now it's in bind mode, so I have to scroll back down to bind mode. I do not know why they have a timeout sequence that's so short, but they do. Cool. Now it's gonna go straight into auto config for the telemetry, okay? All right, so now the first thing we do is look at control surfaces. You can see the flaps are down. Second thing I'm gonna do is pop the lid on, make sure that we don't have any issues with where all the wires fall. And then we'll check CG after a second. Okay, so that's on. Very good fit, by the way. Okay, so ailerons. Incorrect. Elevator. Woo, not even hooked up. But it is going, it is going the correct direction. Rudder, also incorrect. Wow. So, okay, so we're going to click into the function list with the scroll bar. Go to servo setup. We're going to go to travel. Scroll over to uh, not speed. What the heck? There's a reverse. We want to reverse ailerons and rudder. Rudder's going the right direction. Ailerons go in the right direction. And check out those lights. Red nav light, white forward facing, white forward facing, and green, awesome. Nice. Okay, secondly, we have not tested our throttle cut, so please use caution until we do so, camera crew. Okay. I wanna put this thing up here. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the plane in a way that will secure it so it doesn't fly away. Throttle cut's off. Good. Throttle cut's on and tested. So we're good, so we're safe. We can trust the plane for a minute. Okay, rudder's working, ailerons are working, flaps are working, and we have our flaps in the wrong configuration. So I'm gonna actually, in this case, I'm just gonna flip the flap channel, okay? They go down, they go up, cool. So I'm gonna go into flaps. I'm gonna change this to an uh, absolute value of plus 100. Now, if you didn't flip the rotation of that channel, no big deal, you can do it the other way. So instead of having this like that, you would just have them flipped, okay? Take off, landing flaps, and it's a pretty big, it's barn door style. Now, if these don't walk all the way up to home position, check this out, because we're at minus 100 plus 100, servo setup, travel, flaps. I prefer to go to the middle setting so it adjusts both at the same time. And I'm just gonna increase that to like, let's try 115. Getting pretty dang close. Now, I'm gonna go from 115 I would say about 125. Okay, so I'm gonna make, it's a little bit of an overdrive. Okay, so 110 to 125. You can run them all the way down to as much as 150, but as soon as you hear a motor binding, um, that means it's driving it into the foam, okay? That's gonna run your motors hot and they will eventually melt something and fail or the solder will melt, or you'll break the motor, or the teeth will grind and cut. So pretty much if you overdrive your servos, plan on the problems. Okay, roll left, roll right, elevator up, elevator down. We have to set that now. Y'all left, y'all right. So why is the elevator not moving? The reason it's not moving is because it's not hooked up. Why did we not set it up? Because we haven't set up safe, we haven't set up AS3X, but we do know that the stick position is neutral. So you have to start from neutral stick position, 
and you don't want to accidentally end up in safe and then hook up your elevator and then have it go up like this when you put it into normal mode, okay? So we are not in AS3X, we are not in safe. How do we know that? Well, we haven't set up safe. Flip it upside down and it doesn't move. Also, we didn't see any dance when it turned on. You'll see a if it's in safe. You only see one dance for AS3X, you'll see two dances for safe. Okay, so flip the plane upside down. We know the elevator is in the neutral output, meaning it's level, flat, whatever. Okay, careful your antennas. So there's two of these, so you have to pay special attention to where this is gonna land. I want them square on this. I want them square on this. So the first thing I'm gonna do, they recommend the outside hole. I just checked the manual for that here a minute ago. See how far out that is? Mm -hmm. This thing has to slide through that thing. Can they see? Why don't you go over my left shoulder here? You see that? <clears throat> it's out too far. So what I have to do is I have to turn this clevis in. So I'm gonna take three fingers, two on the back, one on the front. So my thumb is pushing hard and then I can twist it. Not quite enough, even harder. Wow, that's really hard. So why does it matter that I hold it? So that you aren't spinning it off of the, from the inside. Exactly. So I'm gonna grab some needle nose pliers. Generally, I can do this with just my fingers. The higher quality, the easier it is to do, okay? I'm gonna hold this, now I can twist these. See, once it's broke free, I can probably go back to just using my fingers. Yep, nope, I'm trying to spin. Now these things always kind of have like a favorable side, it's weird. So I want it to be like this. Now look, I'm gonna hold this with my middle, or it's my index finger, just to hold alignment, and then look how close we are now. Getting way closer. So I'm gonna grab that, we're gonna go in, 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 and in. All right, YouTube, sorry for the interruption. The noises you were hearing have been completed. So put your guess in the comments below on what you think it was. Okay. So still having to hold on to this with the needle nose pliers. And what we're doing is just trying to get that lined up there. And I'm trying to go so that there's like a little kick point. It either goes this way or it goes that way. And all you gotta do is just get it to line up and probably two more. Oh, geez, really? One more? Oh, I just went out. Dang it. There we go. And that's getting pretty darn close right there. I don't think we're going to get a whole lot better than that. Now, remember, you have to do this for both elevator sides. Okay. So, full disclosure, I was out talking to the uh, crew leaders. And we had some different little things we had to go over at the end of the whatever just happened. And you guys can guess what it was in the comments below. Okay, so I still, if you see how this is down? That would be level, that's not level. Okay, so we gotta keep, keep going until it's right. It just doesn't seem like it's moving much. Does it? Is it in my head or does it just like seem like it's not moving? Eh, it's in my head, it's moving. Of course, if you turn it the wrong way, it doesn't move. Yeah, that's pretty much perfect right there. You guys see that? Then you can snap this and then slide that forward. Okay. So now one elevator works and the other one doesn't. You do not want to stop here. <coughs> you want to make sure you get both <laughs> sides. be good. Okay, so now we're gonna hang on to this Give it a few spins, just tightening it so it's going in a little bit. And that's that one was way easier. It didn't need as much adjustment. So we're gonna see if we have that square. So now remember, imperfections here can be adjusted out to a degree with your aileron adjustment on trim, but I would highly recommend that you don't depend on aileron adjustment to trim out an elevator correction that you can was, mechanically make. Right. in there, double check, we're even. Okay, all right, so we got the mechanical installed on there. So now we can elevate her up, down, okay. And it moves, beautiful. T 
tail dragger. That's I cool. love that. Yeah. And I just happen to be writing the control linkage on the foam. Okay. So the next step for us is to set up forward programming. And forward programming is where we actually initiate all the different safe and AS3X. We kind of moved down to this end because the sun chased us away. And so I'm gonna lay this down. And you're probably thinking to yourself, but Brian, don't you need it to be level? Yeah, sure. But watch, we didn't even demonstrate the landing gear yet. Oh yeah, that is so sweet. Look at that. That is cool. Okay, so we'll lay this down. Now we can just put it on its own two feet, roll it forward. Now, a couple things too. Retracts should be the opposite of this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click, go to servo setup, travel, scroll over to reverse. Now I'm gonna do this really, I'm gonna click and then go back. Watch this, click, see? I didn't drop my retracts then. Okay, so elevator up, elevator down. Not very much throw on there, look at that. Elevator up, elevator down. Hmm. Roll left, roll right. Okay, take off flaps so far and landing flaps. So that's kind of a barn door configuration there. So meaning they go way down and I really, the competitive offering has a three flap movement. So if I have any issues with that in terms of flight performance, we're gonna come up with a way to make that all move because that would be super cool. But I love that this one has LEDs and I love that it's small and it's still got all sorts of details. Okay, so everything seems to be working and of course with throttle cut off, beautiful. The throttle cuts back on. All right, so we are literally ready to go into forward programming. Takes a few seconds. Gyro settings. First time setup. Make sure the blah, blah, blah. Okay, so just make sure it's all set up. So you have to have all your reversing and mixes and all that junk set up. And you have to do the first time setup again if you ever change them. Okay, set a level. Now, usually this is not for save level. This just has to do with positional orientation of the receiver. Okay, so I tend to like to keep my models in the flight attitude when doing this, not the on the ground attitude, okay? So I hit continue, set the model on its nose. This is just for it to figure out its position in the aircraft. Okay, then you hit continue. Look at that. Is that the way we did it? Mm-hmm. So now let's double check. We'll pull off the cover and look at that. Does that look the same? It sure does to me, okay? So now we can just hit continue. Okay, now I'm gonna hold this plane and I'm gonna put that canopy back on. It does kind of interfere with that power wire a little bit, so it's a little bit challenging. There is a moment in time when this is gonna reboot the receiver. That's when the throttle could come alive. We don't have any indication it's gonna happen on this plane. Usually it's where you have to do a bunch of weird trimming to get the ESC to arm. We didn't have that problem in this plane, okay? Okay, so gain channel select. I'm gonna use the right knob, okay? So you have to click and scroll in auxiliary three, right knob. That's the input for the right knob. We're gonna apply that now. This is where it's rebooting. One dance, not two, one dance. Okay, so click, go back into forward programming. Takes a second to connect. Okay, we're gonna go back to gyro settings. Now we can go flight mode setup. ES3X is currently active. Inhibit or active. Or we can just select a channel. Mode. 
mode. Off. Safe mode. AS3X mode. Gears on A. That's channel 5. Flaps are on auxiliary 2. Oh, they must be on... You know what? D is actually not on auxiliary 1. That's auxiliary 2. Now it'll work. See, it's not changing. Auxiliary 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk back out. Auxiliary 2. Oh, you can set it right there. That's pretty cool. See that? And then safe will be down here. And I want AS3X active within safe as well. Okay. So now we have to do first time safe setup. Now this is the part where you actually do have to, um, okay, we've already done this. It should already be set. It just passes through from the AS3X setup. I'm in the safe mode, continue. See flight mode three, flight mode two, flight mode one. I wanna be in three, so I'm setting that now. Scroll down to next. Okay. This is where you can make corrections for this. You don't want it to fly around like this. You want it to fly around like this. So if you have to make an adjustment, watch this. Level, model, and capture attitude. Okay. See? Sometimes you have to click back into there. Okay, level, model, and capture attitude. I don't want any roll in there. See that? Look at this. See what I'm doing? If I wanted it to fly like that, look at the numbers. See the numbers keep changing? See that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is where I want it to be. You can make adjustments manually too. Now, attitude trim. Roll means positive is roll right. I don't understand why there's roll in there. And then pitch, the pitch is nose up, nose down. So that should be a positive. That doesn't look like nose up. Oh, you want to know why? Because our receiver is backward. But that's strange. Is there actually a pitch on the receiver? Is that not flat? That looks pretty flat to me. I would say that that's kind of, shouldn't that be like negative? No. Because it says positive is nose up. That's nose down. That's nose up. I captured again. Okay, let's just level it like this. See, it's greater. That's strange. That is strange. Doesn't why does it always have a roll in there? Yeah, why, yeah, why is there a roll? There should but be no roll. It's always... I'm gonna set it to zero. I'm just gonna override it. Okay. I've never actually seen it cause a problem anyway. Right. Okay, so safe is inhibited currently. I'm gonna turn it on. Self-level angle demand, that means auto leveling when you let go of the sticks. And then when I go to off, in inhibited. Pretty cool. So now it's all set and you can make adjustments to your gains. This is where it's gonna reboot. Two dances, watch. Two dances. That's your first time that you'll know that you have safe on. Okay. Okay, so throttle cut's on. Throttle cut is now off. We have to give throttle for AS3X to come alive. Okay. It's working. Okay, so I can tell it's working in the right direction, but for the benefit of the camera, I'm gonna quickly Throttle cut back on. I'm gonna go forward programming. 
I'm gonna go to gyro settings, I'm gonna go to ASRX, and then I'm gonna go to gain four times. Watch this. As I move the rudder, as I move the tail, the rudder's gonna try to uh, undermine my moving it. See moving it? It's trying to go opposite. Now look at the elevator. When I go up, it's gonna move up, up, down, up, down. Now ailerons, the right one's gonna go up when I lift the, the right wing, up, okay. The left one's gonna go up when I lift, yep. Okay, so everything is working in tandem. That's the way it should work. Obviously the flaps are not part of that. Now I can take this gain. This would be full on, this would be full off. Okay, so watch this, that's all the way. I, I aim to make that in the middle, okay? So what I wanna do is I wanna set that down to one times, and then we can adjust that later. Whatever this gets set to, you can capture those gains back to your center of your knob, okay? So then what you do is you go into your adjustable or fixed, see that adjustable, then you can capture the gyro gains. See, then you can go in here and make your adjustments. Then you can recenter that so that when you go between plane and plane and plane and plane, you don't have to fight it, okay? Because you can adjust just one of the axis or if you have multiple spare channels, you could use sliders for like aileron or elevator and then like for rudder and then maybe for um, ailerons, elevator, rudder. So you'd have three channels. So if you had NX10, you could do that right now. Okay, so you can make adjustable and then assign it to different adjustabilities, okay? All right, so everything is set now. You can also set up a panic mode. We don't have additional channels for that and we have set that up one time in a Ranger 1.2 meter, I think is what it was. I if so. I remember right, it's like an FMS Ranger. Mm -hmm. So if you're curious how to do it, it's not a big deal. I don't think it's really necessary. Just turn safe on and, and then you're good. Okay, so another thing you can do to check to see if safe is on, pull up the elevator. As soon as you go to safe, it's gonna reduce your amount of output. That's safe. Safe on. Same thing over there. Safe on. See that? Okay, now rudder, same thing. How come it doesn't change? Because in this case, we don't have any limits on the rudder. Okay. All right, so there you have it, guys. So this plane, this beautiful 1.1 meter F4U4 Corsair uh, from Eros is just Phenomenal, it looks gorgeous. We've got LEDs, we've got plenty of power, it looks like on 3S, we'll see how that does. I believe you should be able to probably run this on 4S, but we're gonna try it on 3S, make sure everything is good. And let's check CG again real quick. Now that we have everything done, verify throttle cuts on and verify tested. All right, so with the landing gear down, we wanna test this. So we're just gonna balance it on our fingertip on those two little dots we made. With 2200, we're still probably a little bit tail heavy. So I'm wondering if we're gonna need to put a bigger battery in there. Mm. Or, better yet, pull this thing out. We've had ours in here for a long time, by the way, guys. So it might be a little bit closer to dead. So I just slid that forward. And with those trays, it's sometimes a little bit hard to tell if you're lined up right or not. And it's a new plane, so I haven't played with it enough to kind of figure out where all that stuff lines up. I was trying to put it in at the wrong angle, folks. My apologies. Doesn't work when you do that. Okay, so we've got that there. I think we should be able to balance out a little bit better now. Oh, we do have the ordinance on there. We could take that off if that makes a bit of a difference. I think we're probably okay. I would say if anything, we're just right on the CG. So if you're in any doubt, you want to probably favor to nose heavy when you're flying new as a new pilot. But for now, I think we'll be okay on this. 
Beautiful looking plane. Can't wait to get this thing in the air. The wind is kind of a little bit crazy right now, so we're not gonna maiden this thing until it calms down a little bit, hopefully at sunset. And obviously, gorgeous lights. Don't hurt for sunset flights, I can tell you that. That thing looks sweet. Really excited to bring this one to you. Mm -hmm. Guys, we've been super impressed with Arrows. Hobbyzone.com has been great to work with. We really appreciate those people. And uh, we think that if you wanna spend some money and help support the people that support us here on this channel, best thing you can do, follow the links in the video description below or maybe navigate over to Brian Phillips RC and just follow those links, the same links, just kind of in different spots. And really at the end of the day, we just wanna help you guys make good decisions on what your uh, RC dollars can do for you. Because you know if you got a $500 a month budget or 600 or 700, whatever it is that you guys are doing, $250 budget or $100 budget, whatever it is, we wanna help you get the most out of it. Uh, because at the end of the day, everybody's got limits on this stuff, whether it be budget for money, budget for time, um, you know, we wanna help you guys make the best of it. And there are so many good choices right now, but there's also a lot of really bad choices. So we wanna help you away from the bad choices, help you get in the sky, help you get flying as quick as possible because when you're new, you just wanna be better all the time. And when you're experienced, you wanna keep getting better all the time. But I'll tell you what, if you've been out of the hobby for 20 years and you're just like, Brian, you know what? I keep seeing these planes and I'm like, they're too good to be true. There's no way they're that good. They're that good. And they're so much better than they were. Just like we started this seven years ago and the planes we're playing with now, some of them are so much better that it's almost kind of hard to explain. Now, of course, I'm a better pilot and the camera crew is improving in her skills and things like this. But at the end of the day, the planes are just better. Mm -hmm. You know, we've had the old trusty P-51s. We've had several of them released in the time we've been here. Some of them are just as good as they were. Some of them are a lot better. And, you know, it's like we're getting a lot of V-2s. This is a V-2, as you can see. But look at that thing. That is absolutely phenomenal. And it's light. You know, these things are not like heavy blimps, okay? And I can tell you the difference between an Arrows product and something you might get over hobby king is the weight yeah and i mean i hate to say it we you know we've done the hobby king planes they approached us to work with us we didn't like their system we were like i'm not sure we want to get into that again we've already done dynam yeah but at the end of the day you know they have some good stuff i don't want to totally beat them over the head but it's like these planes are every bit as good as the e-flight stuff they're very solid they're very easy to put together we did have to glue the wing on this one, but it wasn't hard. It was just that, you know, if you use CA, it's even easier. But I'll tell you what, man, these things are so good. And by the way, the arrows are economical. They're super affordable. Uh, that being said, this one doesn't come with the- uh, the With the vector. The right. vector stabilizer. So you do want to get the AR630. If you get an arrows product that has the vector, pay attention you can get away with a much cheaper receiver and still get the good quality spectrum stuff like an AR620. So super excited about this one. Check it out in the link below. If you wanna help support us on Patreon, we have links below for that as well, and as well as PayPal if you wanna just do one-time donations and gifts and things like that. Um, really, we still think the best way to support us is watch the videos, come back for more, and buy these things when you find something you really like. But if you just insist on sending money, we have those options available. For years we resisted, we probably shouldn't have um, because there's a lot of you guys, our audience is so good to us and we really appreciate you guys being part of it. So for years we've been doing these videos and you've been coming back for more. We try to keep improving a little bit all the time and we hope that that shows through in the video footage, the quality of video, the quality of audio, which was a big one. I just did not want to do mics for so long. And now here it is. I've got my little pocket protector. That's new and extra nerdy for you guys mm -hmm. on YouTube. Because my pocket kept turning inside out. It was driving me nuts. You know, it's just little improvements. <laughs> getting into nerd dad mode even more yep. every day. And I'm not getting any younger. Speaking of, that's true. Are, are we showing them? The thing. Oh, do you guys want to see the extra, thing? Extra nerd dad mode. Yep. No cheating. You have to timestamp when you guessed. Okay. So what and we're going to do like is we're going to de-energize this. Five minutes to tell them. 
we have five minutes. Yes. Otherwise, we're gonna like the camera's gonna blow up. Yes. Everybody's gonna die. Okay. It will right. explode. It will explode. That's what our four year would say. Yep. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna slip on our sandals. We're gonna give you the quick trick of the day. We like throwing in these little adders to the end of our videos <laughs> because you know it really helps grow our business. I can tell you. Except right. not. You know, because everybody wants to see what we're making for dinner. But if you're still watching this video, then you want to know what's going on. So yes. hey. Speaking of what's going on, should we show them this little fun oh, Diddy project? this was not the noise. That was not the noise. Please <laughs> use, that. that's not fresh anymore. It's like three that's days like old. That's like three days old. But, but. Have, have you ever taken <laughs> well, the carpet out of your stairway on like your three-year-old house? Explain it to end up. Because you have 11 cats that used to be three cats. Good enough. That was a super fun project. Yeah, oh, because of one of those speaking things. Speaking of. Yeah, that one that didn't want to move. Cats are like, you know what? I'm, I'm laying here. Don't step here. All right, so let's go out here. That was yeah, not the noise you were hearing. That was not the noise you were hearing. So if you guessed right, we put solar panels on our roof. Woo, look at that. That's amazing. So cool. Yep, okay. So there's some over there. Here, I'm a little bit more long armed. You are. Yeah. Oh! <laughs> so there's some more, and then there's some more. And yes, it was noisy. And then we'll show you down on the side of the house. So basically, this is. Oh, okay. oh we had to cut that tree down. Yeah. And we've done some construction heard. projects because uh, when I'm on vacation, we really relax. Yeah. <clears throat> Except get, not at all. Never. Never. So basically, oh, and we've done a bunch of dirt work too, trying to fix our runway. Really. So here's the unpainted version we've got three panels we ended up with an extra panel because they stole some of our electrical juice they took up one of our breakers and as you can see we have a wonderful thing okay yeah. pretty amazing right hold on i want to check one thing before you come up close oh um yeah okay so come up here I have to cover up part of this because Are it's got yeah. some private information on it. But as you can see, they actually have drawn a map of the system, which is pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what I was going to say is I want to, oh. okay. so there's your, your, your set, your system specs and then parallel generation on site. And then we've got this thing, which has a 200 amp breakout. And then of course we have a separator here that comes from the main. And this was part of the house deal, not part of the solar. And then this is the rapid shutdown switch, which is off. And then this is where they combine everything, which is pretty cool. And then one conduit that they're gonna paint the color of the house, cause they're nice guys. And the people that did a good, they did a really good job. Yeah, look we're how, super happy. Look how perfect everything it is. Really it's like good. almost meets Brian Phillips standards. Yeah. It does. That was it will when it's painted. Literally, my biggest concern was like how all this stuff. Except they looks. got dust on my soffit. Yeah, dust. Dust. Oh. I know it's terrible. Oh, so anyway, oh. and what what I want to do is I want to show you from the front. You can't even see it from the front because obviously we have southern exposure here. That's where you you know the sun shines. And uh, roof cloud. We're trying to make money here. <laughs> So it's, uh, the system is just going to back feed. So it's like a private generation system and just show them the top of the roof line. If you guys are thinking about doing a solar system, no, we're not trying to sell you a solar system. You know, whatever your reasons are for potentially doing solar, it's very expensive. And I'm sure there'll be some better technology that comes out like tomorrow since we just did this. Probably. But at the end of the day, we want this house to be as energy efficient as possible because that over there <laughs> is going to cost us 40% more to fill next year. Yay! That's money down the tubes. So what we're going to do is we're going to probably end up getting another water heater, preheating our electric, and then going to a gas. And then we're going to, I'm thinking about doing some strip elements to add to our gas heating system that's primary electric uh, primary electric or primary gas so I could have a dual fuel system. But I don't have a heat pump or anything like that so it's probably the stupidest way you can do it. 
and it's going to cost a lot to do. If we decide to do that, I think, you know, it might save us money in like 40 years and it'll probably have like a 25 year lifespan. So I don't know. Either way, we're just trying to do the best we can out here. And it's really cool because you can't see it over the top of the roof, right. which is one of our big concerns. Yep. So if you guys end up um, interested, let's wait and see how the numbers turn out before we start talking about who yeah. did it. <laughs> but if you're curious, you can ask me in the comments below. I'll try to kind of answer your questions. It's an 18 kilovolt system or 18, 18 kilowatt system. So 18 kilowatt system is a pretty big system. So it's going to hopefully outpace our usage. And then if we increase our electric a little bit and decrease our gas, then hopefully we won't get completely screwed. Because it's totally. gonna because we're gonna have to use some gas anyway, because we have a gas stove and stuff like yeah. that. And that's the way we wanted it in the first place. So we're okay with that. That's the way we want it. It's just one of those things. So anyway, that's all you get today, guys. Easter egg special. So what it was was people putting in solar panels. They were here for two days and they did a really nice job. They cleaned everything up really good. They were in the attics and they were doing lots of work and they, I mean, we did clean up a little bit, but they were great people to work with. Yep, so really nice like I said, we'll wait until we find out kind of how things shake out, you know, on the money end of things, because a lot of this comes down to dollars and cents and whether or not you're going to save money or you're going to spend money. But some people have other reasons for doing it. Yep. So no, it's not an off grid system. We would need batteries in there too. And uh, there are different inverters that are uh, uh, able to do that. And I don't think that's what we're going to end up with yet. But at some point, we would like to do an automatic transfer switch style uh, battery backup system. So if you guys know about that, leave it in the comments below. We're not just geeks with airplanes. We promise. And when I say we, I mean me. Yep. All right. That's all you get, guys. F4U Corsair 1.1 from Eros. Buy it from the links below. Leave questions in the comments. And don't forget the timestamp. When you guessed, don't cheat. We know if you cheated. Come back for more.